Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. Over the last several episodes, we talked about the first three commandments, and now it's time to tackle the fourth. Honor, Honor thy, thy father, father and thy mother, 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 that thou, thou mayest be long lived, lived upon the land which the Lord thy God, God will give thee. Give thee. Exodus 20:12. 12. This commandment touches on a few basic things, but one thing is at the base of it, probably more than any other commandment, a proper understanding of the concept of authority. These days a lot of people, even people who believe very strongly in God, don't recognize or respect legitimate authority. However, the fact of the matter is that throughout the entire Bible, and certainly ever since then, God has selected certain individuals to have authority over his people. Adam was selected as the head of the first family, and Cain as the head of the second. Noah had the authority to command his sons to help him with the ark, and one of his sons was punished for not respecting this authority. Abraham had authority over his family, which was passed on to Isaac and Jacob in the form of the father's blessing on the son. Joseph was given authority over his brothers, and Moses had authority over all the people of Israel, an authority which God demonstrated by crushing those who rebelled against it. The judges in the book of Judges had and exercised God's authority, crushing the enemies of Israel, and the kings were given their authority by God. The prophets were given the authority to perform miracles in order to lead people back to God and to preach God's authority over all men. And when the people of Israel were exiled to Babylon, and indeed when the Jewish temple was destroyed in 70 AD, it was because they rejected the authority that God had placed over them. This is just a summary of how God acts by forming groups of people and setting a certain individual in authority over those groups. In order to keep the group from breaking up or being unable to accomplish anything, after all, if each person in a group basically does whatever they want to, nothing as a group is really going to be accomplished. That's the purpose of authority, to maintain proper order and accomplish good things. However, authority figures can also have a bad effect on us or even be really evil. Why do these people come to authority? I think often the answer is the same as the Babylonian exile. God wants people to accept his authority. When they refuse to accept his authority, a different authority steps in. Maybe it imposes itself by force, like the king of Babylon. Maybe they choose him themselves, like King Saul. In either case, it doesn't matter. These authority figures always disappoint because God didn't choose them, and only God knows whether and how deeply an authority figure will hurt us in the future, because only God can see the future. In any case, when evil authority figures arise, this can often be the result of people rejecting good authority figures. There are also times when an evil authority figure will actually lead more people to God by accident than a good one will intentionally. Mao Zedong, for example, was an evil dictator of the First Order, yet under his tyrannical and oppressive rule, Christianity flourished. In the same way, evil can often lead people to God. If this is true of societies, a somewhat large and complicated group of people, it's even more true of families, a smaller and far more basic group. In fact, the family is the most basic type of community there is, but we'll talk more about that next time. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.